This is a story that runs below the surface of our day-to-day -day attention. Across the world our rivers are drying up. 2022, many of them are now at record low levels. The Amazon, the world's largest rainforest, makes its own weather. Up to half of all the rainfall in the Amazon comes from the forest itself, as moisture is recycled from the trees to the atmosphere and back again. Many tributaries are dry now. The mighty Madeira River registered its lowest ever level since official records began in 1998. The Acre River, which cuts through the city, fell to its lowest level since measurements started in 1967. The situation is similar for the Colorado River, which supplies 1 in 10 Americans with water. For the last 23 years the water has been receding due to the ongoing drought experienced by western states. The river's flow is down by about 20% compared to the 1900s and the two largest reservoirs it feeds are less than a third full. The water level of the Danube is one-third of what it should be. Most alarming this year is the scope of the low water levels across the entire Danube Basin, from Bavaria to the Black Sea. Even sunken warships from World War II have re-emerged out of the waters. On the Elbe, the water levels receded so low that ha old hunger stones resurfaced. Chiseled into the rocks were the words, weep if you see me. Hamburg's second river, the Alster, meanwhile has dried up almost entirely near its source. While the predicament of the great rivers of Europe has grabbed the headlines, it is the smaller rivers that suffer disproportionately. So many of them are completely dried up, not a drop of water left. In the record low Euphrates river that winds through ancient Mesopotamia, the water levels are so low now that thousands of years old buildings reappear on the surface. Most of its water are now held back in gigantic dams in Turkey and Syria, so that barely any water reaches modern Iraq. Four hundred million people live close to the Ganges and are depending on it. The river and its tributaries have seen unprecedented low levels of water in several low reaches. It has been predicted that during the non-monsoon months there will be hardly any flow in large stretches of the river from Varanasi to Kolkata in the coming years. France's River Loire is a shallow river at the best of times, but this year even its flat bottom tourist barges can barely navigate the waters greatly reduced by a record drought. Even some hundred kilometers from where the Loire empties into the Atlantic Ocean, sandbanks now stretch as far as the eye can see, large islands connect to the shore and in places people can practically walk from one side of the river to the other. A 
Around one-third of rainfall in the US ends up in the Mississippi River. And with decreased rainfall in the Midwest, there's less water entering the river to begin with. October 12, 2022, the river is more than 8 feet below its normal level. The Mississippi River transports 90% of US grains. Barges carrying corn and soy cannot make their way through the river, as the water has evaporated in many areas. Barge traffic is reduced by 39% and many of these barges are stuck in the mud. In Italy, the Po River is about 6 to 7 feet lower than usual. Corn and risotto rice crops have been hit hard by the drought. Rice growers report that over half of their 2022 harvest may fail this year. The government declared a state of emergency in northern Italy and vast fields of crops were left abandoned. As with other rivers, tributaries suffer most and people here too can now cross dry riverbeds. The Po River is also a source for hydroelectric power that is desperately needed in the industry rich north of Italy. Yangtze, its name means long river, and indeed it is the longest river in Asia, the third longest in the world. The Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze features the largest hydroelectric power station in the world. This year precipitation was 80% lower than usual. Too many other rivers are at record lows this year. The Rhine in Europe, the mighty Nile, the Volga, the Yellow River and many more. It is famine on the horizon for millions of people. So what can be done? 